Hi guys, it's Alicia here, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you a very crazy story, which is, I'm 100% sure, not going to be any boring whatsoever. So if you want to hear about my trip from Egypt to Poland, which had so much bad luck that it took me three days to get home, which should have taken only 12 hours. If you want to know what happened, if you want to know all the misdirects that happened then just keep listening and for people interested in the brushes all the brushes brushes i'm using in the moment of the process of the drawing are noted on the bottom of the video so you can see it and if you want to get the brushes you can get them on my website aliziaprints.com or just click in the link in the description of this video so let's just begin i'm a very optimistic chill relaxed person okay 2 a.m 6th july i was still outside chilling with some people i met in egypt 7 30 a.m 6th july in the morning i had my flight it was literally the departure time i went home slept at 3 a.m i slept about two hours i woke up at 5 a.m which a little bit late my hotel was 20 minutes from the airport so i was not worried i was at the airport at 6 30 precisely and then I, I get to know that i was at the wrong terminal but terminals can be that far away right they like terminals are not that far away okay well apparently it was so not everyone speaks very good english but the taxi driver they always speak very good english they always do those motherfuckers if they want to sell you something, they speak English perfectly. He told me it's three kilometers until terminal two, where I needed to be. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, you, I need to drive you there. You can't walk there. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't have any Egyptian pound on me anymore. So I, I went to the ATM to get the money to pay him to drive me to the right terminal. But the ATM doesn't work. Like, it's the first... It was the first bad luck it was the first misdirect in this story and there will be a lot so i had to drive with a taxi driver 10 minutes away from the airport get the money and then 10 minutes back and with all the talking and getting the money and everything i was 30 minutes later and of course i can't get on a plane anymore because they closed the gates like 40 minutes before so i was just late for my flight and when I found out that I always wait late for the flight, I literally, uh, my stress started kicking in. And that doesn't happen too often for me because I am very chill, very relaxed person, as I said. But that's when I started stressing out. Fast forward, I can't get on the plane, so I managed to find a flight from Hurghada to Cairo. When I got onto the plane from Hurghada to Cairo, I managed to find a flight from Cairo to Frankfurt happily, because it's way better than staying in Egypt. So I buy the plane ticket through the phone, I called the lady, the phone number of this flight company and i do everything i just buy it through giving my card information you know everything is managed so i i begin to get hope i feel a little bit better so my flight from cairo to frankfurt was about to be at 12 pm i arrived <clears throat> just like planned in cairo at 11 am so i had one hour it should be enough, right? No, of course not. They closed the gates 55 minutes before the departure. 55 minutes before the departure, the gates were closed. So I was just standing there at the airport knowing that in one hour my flight is going to go and I can't get on it because they closed the gate, which I find so ridiculous. Like. Maybe there's some something I don't understand, but 55 minutes, like you can wait at least a little bit longer. Like there, there were so many empty gates where I could check in, but it was already closed. Ah, <sighs> okay. So I, I found out. <laughs> I was there. I found out that I can't get on this plane too. So I just lost even more money, and I just lost my last chance to get to frankfurt this day 
so I, I called the lady, I called the phone number of this airplane company and I, like my stress was a little bit before that, but then it really kicked in and I call her and I say, like, I can't get on a plane, they closed the gates and she, she asked me for the booking number and I, I, I'm starting to tell her the booking number and it was literally something like this in the middle of the airplane er, airport i stood there and i said okay two four eight one one," and i started crying like a baby i was so stressed out i started crying and this mm, motherfucking lady this freaking lady in the phone is an angel because she literally told me, okay, I have another flight for you, also to Frankfurt. Oh, no, 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 wait, sorry, I made a mistake. Just to be clear, the flight I missed was not to Frankfurt, it was to Dortmund, I think, also in Germany, so almost the same thing. <laughs> anyway, so she found one to Frankfurt for, uh, I don't know how much money, because she told me, okay, you know what? I will just switch it for you. I will not take any more money from you. And I was like, what? <laughs> and she said, yes. And you will have a flight at 4 p.m. to Frankfurt. Don't be late, okay? Because it was the same lady that I bought the other ticket from that I was late for when I arrived in Cairo. And maybe it was my tears, my voice or my pathetic story but she spared me like 400 euros which i will always be thankful she didn't only spare me the money she spared me the stress of having to stay in a, in a whole different continent unplanned i thought the worst was behind me and no oh alicia you really thought so <laughs> everything is all right yeah i think everything is okay I walk to the other terminal and there's something that changes the whole story from the morning because I thought that in the morning that I already had to take the taxi to get to the right terminal when the whole, whole story began but then I was walking from one terminal to another terminal outside in Cairo and there was a taxi driver that told me exact same story Oh yeah, uh, another terminal, where do you need to go? Uh, yeah, terminal uh, 3 is in uh, 3 kilometers. Like, I will take you, I will take you. It will be so many, so much, so much pound. Egyptian pound. And I'm like, no. I, I was so, I was so, like, done with everything and everyone that I, I was just ignoring him, you know? So I just walked further, I said no. And every time he tried to convince me, I was like, no and finally just, he just walked away but then i was like wait how the hell is it three kilometers again i was walking there and someone that seems seemed like he was working for the airport he came to me and he asked where do i need to go and i say yeah terminal three and he said okay i'll help you it's there and it's hard with your big um package with your big coffer i don't know how you call it where you have all your things to get it upstairs because the the walk path is skewed you know it's like it goes up it's not like stairs but you need to push push it a little bit so i was like okay okay help me then <laughs> and i was i was still done with everything so i was literally a zombie almost and i was asking like do you know what if, if the terminal free is here why did the taxi driver ask me to drive me there and he said it's three kilometers because it happened second time today and he said oh yeah they do that because if you go with a car it's literally three kilometers because you have to drive around the airport to get to the right place and you have to drive up to get at the parking lot precisely in front of the main entry and i'm like oh oh my god so this is the reason this is the motherfucking reason why 
it's all happening to me. Because a taxi driver decided to lie to me and not care about me being late for my flight at all. He didn't inform me that I can walk there, I can be faster there. And I, I told him, I was talking, saying it all the time, I'm going to be late, I can't, I'm, I'm going to be late. He didn't care. He decided to take 200 Egyptian pound from me for driving me to the ATM and back to the same airport, but from the, a different side. Everything became so clear and I'm if I ever find this freaking taxi driver that did this to me, I swear I'm going to fight him. Like he was he was like my height. I I might win this. <laughs> so anyway, I have to wait one hour before I, I can go to get into the airplane through the security because you can't get through security earlier than three hours before your flight. So it's waiting and then I finally get in there I go through security and I go right away to the gate to check motherfucking in and I go to the gate show my vaccination uh, certificate because I am vaccinated I was vaccinated and there is a human error right here I was waiting there for 45 minutes so I was I was <laughs> starting to get a little bit stressed out again because it was two hours 15 minutes before my flight um, and I get to know that Frankfurt didn't accept my vaccination because it's not 14 days after, it's 13 days after. And it flew over my head because all this time I actually thought I have flight at 7th, not at 6th July. And it just totally flew over my head. And I was like, oh no, this is something I just can't skip anymore. This is going to be the end of everything I'm going to fucking jump from the window <laughs> no no but when I heard that I was like this is impossible I can't have so much bad luck in one freaking day the ladies in this whole story were angels this lady helped me so much she told me okay you need to take the test and she told me where to go how to go she helped me to get through the security faster, way faster. And she told me she's going to wait for me with the gate open. And she did. I went, I had like one hour time to do all of it. I had to go, wait 20 minutes for the results and get back. And she waited there for me. I was like 30 minutes before the flight, which normally it would not be acceptable. But this angel, this angel of a woman, waited there with the gate open and I checked in and I took the flight and I was sitting in the flight from Cairo to Frankfurt and lady I am sending you good vibes I am sending you my prayers I am not religious but if I can I'm sending it and I love you lady I just love you lady but anyway I um, arrived in Frankfurt, but it was very late, it was 9 p.m., so I had to go and get a hotel. I find out I can't use my phone because my card has been blocked because I use internet in Egypt. So I can't call, I can't use internet. All I can do is ask people for help, ask people to um, use the internet, to call somewhere. So I was depending on my <laughs> on other people, actually, all the time. So I slept in the hotel and I woke up and I couldn't take the plane to Poland, although it was so close, it's a one hour flight, but I couldn't because it was 400 euro to get a flight the same day or the next day. So I managed to find uh, like a blah blah car. It's how you find other people to drive with you. If you make long trips, like if someone goes from Frankfurt to Krakow, and you're going to, you can just join and you pay them a part of uh, the gas money, you know? So I did that and I went with a guy. It was, it, it, we can just fast forward, skip, it was a nice trip. And we are in the evening of the next day, so it's 7th of July, second day of going back from Egypt to Poland. And I arrived in Krakow. I had my car there because I left it there, because it was close to the airport. So I was just planning to get the car, drive those two hours back to my home. And happily, the guy stayed to see if my car 
is working because I told him, yeah, it wasn't working so well. It was 2, 2 a.m. He stayed, my car doesn't work. Happily, he was there because I could use his phone to call for, like, the, like, call the people that take your car, you know, they take the car that doesn't move. I called it, I paid a, a lot of money again and I found out it has to stay for a few days because it's not working, something broke and I was there 2 a.m. The guy was already gone because I called the, the help and it was like, yeah, I can always call from this guy, his phone, but thank you for the help and he, he went and then I called from the number of the guy who came for my car, I had one number I could call. Only one number. Because my friend, she is living in, she was living in a university, right? Like university, like the, 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 the student house. And you can't get in there after 12 a.m. You can't, you, you just can't. So I just asked her before, like, okay, if, if the car doesn't work, but, but I was so sure it will. But if it's, it's not working, like, give me the number to, for, uh, to your boyfriend. Because he was like, yeah, if, if something happens, she can sleep in my place because he has a free bed. So, I, this, this was the only number I could call. This was the only way I could sleep anywhere this night. So, I call him. I took a taxi I went there and I slept there and I had to go home without, without my car the next morning with a train and I had to come back for my car with a train a few days later which was the last point of my trip and it took three days and I was I was a mess I was not a human anymore. I was very tired, very destroyed from the inside. Anyway, I hope you like the story. I uh, hope you like the drawing. And if you like this video, um, make sure to let me know in the comments. I need to know if you want to hear more story times, which can include a story time where I actually talked with a ghost or a story time where I almost died when I was and in a car accident, car slash bike accident. So tell me in the comments if you want to hear those stories. I have a lot of crazy stories. My life is kind of crazy. So yeah, let me know if, in the comments if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you want to hear more story times. And of course, if you want to see drawing tutorials, like more drawing uh, content, check out my other videos too. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I love you so much and I will hope you, hopefully see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Kisses.